welcome to the fifth lecture on health safety and environmental management in offshore and petroleum engineering. We have already covered basic introduction to safety in the previous four lectures. We have understood the necessity why safety is important, why safety assurance is essential for an hydrocarbon industry like oil and gas industry. In this lecture in module 1 which encompasses on safety assurance and assessment, we will talk about safety in operations. This particular topic has many dimensions. When this topic is applicable to process industry, people call this segmental area as process safety management briefly as PSM. We will try to touch the concepts of process safety management as applicable to oil and gas industries. So, we rename this area as safety in operations as applicable to oil and gas industries. Let us quickly look at the project life cycle of any process industry. Now, oil and gas industry is no way exempted from a conventional process industry because of simple reason that after hydrocarbons are explored they need to be processed before they enter into a commercial retail market. So, let us now look very briefly what are those studies which are important for a project life cycle. A project life cycle essentially has three domains of interest one is what we call design and engineering stage, the second is erection and commissioning stage, the third one is operational stage. Now, safety assessment is important in terms of all the three stages let us see how do we intervene safety in different stages of a project life cycle. If you look at the design and engineering stage of any project of an offshore platform project health safety and environmental review which we briefly call as PHSER is generally a part of design and engineering stage of any new proposed project. To understand what are the difficulties during operations, we also conduct what is called HAZOP which is called hazard and operability studies. Since hydrocarbons operate on high temperature high pressure modules, we also study something on design of fire protection systems. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important that safety can be implemented at the process stage, it can be also implemented at the design stage. So, this is one important area where one can talk about safety implementation in the design stage that is design of fire protection systems. We also do quantitative risk assessment in the last lecture we touched upon three interesting examples how safety or risk assessment or risk management in general has been encompassed by an economical features. We have taken three examples to explain how Morgan's rule, Frank rules can be applied to actually assess the economical loss which is encountered because of any risk occurring in any production or process plants. We also conduct functional safety assessment, we also do design of fire and gas detection systems that is also a part of safety in operations. We also conduct very importantly environmental impact assessment studies that is called EIA studies. Of course, we have lot of discharge getting into the sea after the crude oil is explored. So, we conduct waste water consulting and design of zero liquid discharge plants. We also do design of lightning protection systems because that is a very important area as the offshore platforms are located in an open sea lightning is a very important area which can affect the electro processing of many equipments which are placed on board in an offshore platform. So, in design and engineering stage many studies related to safety are generally initiated parallelly during erection or commissioning stage also safety studies are definitely inherent part of this. Construction risk assessments are, are carried out development of EHS systems third party support during the construction phase of the project also carry out lot of risk assessment studies, 
pre commissioning audits contractor safety ratings because you cannot deploy a contractor or cannot give him a hot work permit if the safety ratings of a contractor is not on a satisfactory mark the contractor cannot be employed by an organization specialized construction techniques safety trainings for all the people on board including the people from the management side and including the people from the contractor side accident investigations that is very important because accidents do occur especially during the erection and commissioning stages. So, one has got to conduct periodically and whenever it is demanded an accident investigation fire protection system commissioning because here is the design and here it is commissioning part of it. So, we do conduct lot of safety assessment studies and risk assessment studies even during erection and commissioning stage. Finally, during the operational stage as we saw safety in process it is very important that we do conduct lot of safety studies especially when operation is being carried out. Process safety consulting like QRA, HAZOP and SIL studies we will talk about very quickly the SIL studies in this lecture. Of course, I have got dedicated lectures on HAZOP studies with detailed examples as applied to oil and gas industries. One has to also conduct fire risk assessment and electrical risk assessment because you know electricity or electric short circuit is one of the important reason for many major fire accidents happen in offshore platforms. We also importantly conduct comprehensive safety audits for operation stage platforms of course, wastewater audits and energy audits adequacy check of fire protection systems safety culture surveys lightning protection risk assessment, thermal imaging scanning that is called thermography surveys and people also conduct logistic risk management solutions. So, ladies and gentlemen in three different stages of a project life cycle as applicable to any process industry nevertheless applicable to oil and gas industries also in design and engineering stage, in construction or commissioning stage and in operational stage people do conduct mandatorily many types of safety assessments and risk assessment studies which are very important as listed here. Of course, most of them we will try to cover in different modules in this program, but some of them are intrinsically vertically very important where one has to acquire a special training in conducting these kind of reports or surveys or assessments. Let us ask a question are we prepared for an emergency plan. Now, this slide is very important to understand that if you do not know the consequences of a risk case then you end up in taking a very bad decision. Your alertness, your smartness, your understanding and your update on training becomes very important as an individual if you really want to implement good safety review programs in your management. Let us take look at this cartoon where this man is actually thinking how to take care of this particular tail it may be a snake it can be any other animal can be even a rope. So, he is confused how to tackle this particular problem he tries to hit it thinking that this is as small or as enoughly long as he could handle, but ultimately if you look at the next part of the figure you will notice that that was actually not a snake or a rope it was tail of a tiger and tiger start chasing him. So, if you are not prepared to tackle any emergency situation in case of risk management the risk management will become a giant which will start chasing you very badly. Here is the statistics prepared on one survey conducted by DNV where I am trying to show this for a better understanding of inventory of major incidents worldwide. In the last lecture ladies and gentlemen if you understand the terminologies we clearly define the difference between incident and an accident. All incidents do not ripen to become an accident. An incident along with the environmental and atmospheric and the given situation converts them promotes them or intuits them to become an accident. So, let us talk about inventory of major incidents which occurred worldwide 
if you look at this table here the loss of containment was very high in terms of the major incidents followed by which fire is considered to be one of the important incident type which resulted in major catastrophic accidents. Of course, fire and explosion are inherently connected and dependent to each other. If fire is there it could be always followed by an explosion on the other hand if it explodes it can set up in fire as well and obviously, when such two instances happen consecutively it will result in release of lot of environmental chemicals which is called environmental release and the number of instances where the environmental release seems to be the lowest and the loss of containment seems to be the maximum. If you look at the consequences of these kind of incidents because incidents frequency is one part of the risk management consequence assessment is the second part of the risk management. If you look at the consequence of these incidents the loss of fights reported is about 163 whereas, the regulatory fines imposed on these companies or management for violating safety norms is 674. On the other hand this study in summary very clearly shows wherever such instance major instance happened worldwide there has been stringent regulations imposed on these companies. So, that they should not be repeated even then as you understand accidents do occur because accidents are not created they are caused because of various factors as we have seen earlier slides and we will also see the due course of this program. So, most importantly the fundamental consequence which generally occurs as a major one is a regulatory fine just to become a corrective measure. Seconding to that is the injury. Now, put together injury and loss of life which is called challenge to a personal safety can be considered to be the major one as equivalent to that of regulatory fines. It means, if a company encounters an accident in its production plant there are two major catastrophic damages happening to the company. One is the financial loss because there are regulatory fines imposed on the company. The second is the insurance claims because personal safety is challenged because there is loss of life and there is injury to people. In addition these two there are other consequences parallelly happening with the production downtime because your company or your plant or your production unit is shut down for some time until it is recovered back for production further. So, the production downtime is one of the great economic loss a company can face if they are not able to foresee or envisage any damage expected because of safety violations. In addition to this site evacuation is one important consequence which generally occur when there are a lot of chemical releases happening in the atmosphere. This comparison clearly so shows you that what are the large losses happened in petrochemical industry. If you look at the type of loss generally reported in the last 30 years in any process industry the major loss about 36 percent is due to vapor cloud explosion followed by which major or two fire and explosion. If you look at all of them put together so they are the three primary reasons why many losses have been incurred in any process industry. Vice versa if you look at the different kinds of industries which has encountered accidents and loss in the last 30 years which the total loss amounted to a very high value as shown here the major loss which has been reported and seen in the literature is from the petrochemical industries followed by that is the refinery industry. If we include the refinery and the petrochemical as a process industry which helps the oil and gas production systems to reach the commercial market then these two put together becomes a major source of reporting of accidents in the society where major losses have been reported. So, it is very important for us to understand ladies and gentlemen being a safety executive being an employee of an oil and gas industry safety becomes primary important to us because this kind of safety violation leads or challenges the major economic loss of the company as well as they also disturb the or initiate societal risk because fire explosion and vapor cloud explosion put together will result in lot of chemical release in the environment which can affect and cause serious impact to health of people living and surrounding your plant. Let us quickly look at another data prepared by Mars database European Union which summarizes the 10 year data. 
this data is interesting because this data tells me what are the substances involved in major accidents in petrochemical industries. If you look at this list of substances, the major substance reported to participate in the major accident is the LPG as well as gas oil. So, hydrogen, crude oil, heavy hydrocarbons, gas oil, natural gas, LPG, ethylene, sulfuric products and <coughs> HF which includes a very nominal number the major contribution essentially comes from the LPG or it also comes from gas oil. So, these are the two segments which are contributing as a substance involvement in major accidents in petrochemical industry. So, both of them will include interestingly a dispersion of chemical release in the atmosphere which can cause a serious damage to the society or to the people living around or can even damage the adjacent neighborhood properties as well. Now, let us ask a question ourselves if safety is that important in process what are those limitations or what are those challenges this particular industry in terms of safety applied to operation is being faced upon. Now, the major factors or the challenges which are foreseen which prevents successful implementation of process safety are the following aging assets because many assets once commissioned are not updated for their protecting capacity low or zero return on investment in safety because the management does not see what is the commercial benefit of the profit of return whatever they invested on towards safety there is essentially very low return on any expenditure goes towards safety or practically there is no return. The third issue which is very important is the installations of oil and gas industry especially the process plants not the production unit the process plants are essentially located in a thickly populated areas. It is because of the reason that the commercial market of this or the transportation cost of the processed chemical is to be made as minimum as possible. So, that they are generally located in a thickly populated area on the other hand when such industries are formed obviously, colonies are developed in and around this industry because these industry give lot of employment opportunities. So, it is very important for us to also know and realize that non adherence to standard operating procedure is also one of the important challenge what this company or this industry is facing. Top down safety culture for example, the safety is always taken as a prerogative of a person working on board, but it is not applied to a blue collar person in the top management industry. Shortage of skilled manpower therefore, the manpower is over exercised lack of proper maintenance scheduling most importantly training and retraining of manpower to assimilate the upcoming technology is not practiced in many of the industries as a continuous process. So, safety regulations, safety training, safety education, risk management, hazard studies, education on hazardous substances is very important for every personnel working in oil and gas industry and this has got to be done on a periodic basis. Remember ladies and gentlemen safety is not expensive it is actually priceless. Let us ask a question about how to manage risk. The moment ask this question of managing risk, what you get in your mind is a process safety incident ratio pyramid. If you look at the construction of this pyramid, the base of the pyramid is very wide as well as the apex of the pyramid is very narrow. The narrow portion which is the apex of the pyramid is only addressing the fatality part of the process safety incidents. Whereas, the base of the pyramid which is very very large is formed essentially because of the defects in the process. On the other hand ladies and gentlemen safety methods in process becomes very essential if you really want to control the occurrences or mitigate occurrence of accidents completely in any process industry as applicable to oil and gas industries as well. Because the majority of safety incident ratio pyramid shows that the base of the pyramid essentially grows from deficiencies in the process systems followed by which process safety incidents 
loss of containment, then occurrence of fire and explosion, of course, the production downtime and followed by which injury and fatality which are actually challenging to personal safety. So, safety in terms of incident ratio pyramid of personal safety is only a very low margin compared to that of deficiencies in the process itself. So, there is a very interesting demand of understanding safety in operations itself. So, every process and every mechanism in the process should be thoroughly ascertained and tested and checked and examined periodically for its safety review mandatorily. So, therefore, we now understand the importance of learning process safety management. However, I am not going to introduce you PSM in detail, but I am going to touch upon very briefly how process safety can be examined and studied and understood in simple terms as applicable to oil and gas industry as a part of HSE program. Process safety management is a proactive and systematic identification, evaluation, mitigation and prevention of chemical releases. So, this is essentially related to process only, it is not related to manufacturing or production or mechanisms or any machines at all. So, it is a proactive and systematic identification, evaluation, mitigation and prevention of chemical releases which result from failure in process, procedures or equipments. Process safety is therefore, a blend of engineering and management skills which is focused on preventing catastrophic accidents, particularly explosions, fire and toxic releases that are associated with the use of chemicals and petroleum products. Process safety management is briefly referred as PSM. It is the application of management systems to identify, understand and control process hazards to prevent process related injuries and incidents. Now, the fundamental objective of any successful process safety management is to minimize the process incidents by evaluating the whole process. So, understanding the process becomes very vital if we really wanted to know how this process could result in anticipated catastrophic damages. So, understanding the process being a process personnel, also understanding safety regulations and more importantly willing to practice safety as a program and assurance to the management is important to have successful implementation of process safety management in a given system. Essentially OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.119 which addresses process safety management of highly hazardous chemicals in 1992 has become a basic standard of practicing process safety management as applicable to oil and gas industries. Now, let us ask a question which is very very confusing, but it is a very overlapping answer. What is the difference between process risk and process safety? We have already seen in the last lecture what is the difference between risk and safety, because they are contemporary to each other. Safety is a qualitative domain, whereas risk is a quantitative domain. Now, let us here understand process risk versus process safety as explained by IEC 61511. Process risk is the risk that arise from process conditions caused by abnormal events including malfunctioning of process control systems. Existing risk that arise from specified process hazards are also a part of process risk. Risk that arise from human factor issues is also a part of process risk. Risk associated with the process which is planned for risk reduction though process control mechanism is also in place is also a part of risk which is coming from the process. Sometimes ladies and gentlemen the risk reduction mechanisms will also instigate risk associated with the process. So, all these becomes a part of process risk whereas, process safety is actually freedom from the process risk. So, you do not want any risk occurring from the process you call that as process safety whereas, process risk is addressing many areas which arise from the existing conditions of abnormal events, malfunctioning of equipments, human factors and 
risk arise from specified process hazards. Now, let us ask a question what are the differences between process safety and personal safety, because we already seen that safety is not only applied and adapted to a personal safety, we are also important in reducing loss prevention okay. that is very important. If a process safety is a safety hazards which are initiated for, for major from major accidents, this results in release of chemicals, fire, explosion. It is a high consequence, low frequency phenomena. Whereas, if you talk about personal safety, this gives rise to incidents such as injuries and fatalities. Examples could be falls, trips, crushing, and electrocution. These events are low consequence but high frequency. So, risk is a product of consequence and frequency. Therefore, both of them are important. However, process safety becomes much more important because though the frequency is very low, the occurrence, the interval of occurrence of accidents are very low, the consequences are very severe. Therefore, process safety generally overrules, generally overrides on personal safety in a given successful management system. Because if a process is safe enough, your personal safety will be more or less taken care of automatically. Now, the question comes what are those indicators through which I can understand whether personal safety or process safety is practiced satisfactorily. The personal safety factors could be first aid injuries, hours lost to injuries, recorded incidents that could have resulted in personal injury, exposure due to improper use of personal protection equipments. They generally these indicators should capture the efficacy of the personal safety programs employed by the company. Whereas, the indicators of process safety for example, could be the number of failure of critical equipments during the process of production system, incidents of loss of containments, fire, exposure, cost by process failures. Actually, these indicators measure the ability of the process to be within control and not allow any undesired incident to happen. So, process safety indicators are related qualitatively to the ability of the process itself, whereas personal safety indicators are quantified using these kind of measurements like counting the number of injuries happened, counting the number of fatalities happened etcetera or counting the number of recorded incidents which lost resulted in personal injury etcetera. So, there are two different indicators set of indicators for this which will assess the personal and process safety practiced by the organization. If you look at the process safety triangle, it is very interesting that the base of the triangle actually grows from insufficient operating discipline. If you are able to inculcate an operating discipline or a work culture and if your maintenance schedule is perfectly placed in order, your pyramid will not have any base which are as wide as shown here. Followed by which if your operational discipline is not proper, it is insufficient. If your maintenance schedule is not updated, then near misses could have been a large in number which includes demand of safety systems, plant upsets, flaring etcetera. So, when they are overruled that will result in what is called loss of primary containment. When these three occur by and large obviously, the process safety incident will result in which will affect both economical loss to the company or the management as well as challenge of personal safety to the people working on board. So, process safety triangle as an apex of process safety incident whereas, the base of the triangle essentially comes from the lethargic mode of taking safety or practicing safety in an organization. That is why you will see that most of the organizations are always focusing on implementing safety standards, safety practices, safety training programs very stringently. So, that they do not leave even a word of overcoming insufficient operating discipline of work culture in the organization. Now, what are the elements of process safety? We talked about process safety, what are the elements? There are different participating factors on process safety, employee participation, process safety information, process hazard analysis, operating procedures, training, 
contractor safety, safety review methodologies, mechanical integrity, hot work permits, management of change, incident investigations, emergency response planning, compliance safety audits and trade secrets. These are all different elements which are very important and vital of a process safety program. If you look at the process safety information which is a written document which process the safety information of the entire process system, this should mention the details of the process in operation. It should include hazards of the process, technology of the process, process instrumentation diagrams which we call as PIDs, process flow charts. It should also show details of equipments involved in the process. Most importantly ladies and gentlemen, a nicely well documented process safety information will actually help the safety executive to prepare an hazard analysis for a given process scenario. Now, one may ask me a question what is the use or what are the advantages of preparing an hazard analysis much in advance. Hazard analysis is a report which is prepared based on anticipated failure of a process safety or unsuccessful process safety. Even before the progress is or the plant is commissioned, uh, analysis is made anticipating the failure or post related failures. So, if the process management system or the process safety information is available in detailed documented manner, it becomes easy for an HSE executive to easily prepare an hazard analysis report which can be then documented and studied in detail and implemented. So, that majority of the accidents in terms of process safety violations can at least be avoided or can be easily mitigated. One should also have very interestingly the toxicity information about the chemicals involved in the process that is very important. This information must contain permissible exposure limits of the toxic chemical, physical data, reactivity data, corrosivity data, thermal and chemical stability data, foreseeable hazardous effects of the inadvertent mixing of different material that could occur during the process. One interesting tool which could give most of the information which is available in production unit or manufacturing units or material safety data sheet. A typical material data sheet will look like this which contains all most of the information related to toxicity. For example, the trade name can be acetone, it can be a powderous form, the chemical formation is given, it can be the temperature maintenance can be given and hazardous ingredients which is given in terms of percentage is also written. So, that based on this one can find out the exposure limits of this chemical, then based on this one can take care of the preventive measures well in advance. So, in many cases material safety data sheet itself will give information on toxicity. Let us talk about process hazard analysis as a brief introduction in process safety management. Process hazard evaluation or analysis <coughs> must be performed using one of the following methods. It can be what if, preparation of checklist, hazard and operability studies, failure mode and effect analysis, fa fault tree analysis and or appropriate equivalent methodology. There are many methods based on which you can do probabilistic hazard evaluation. As we showed you in the previous slides, safety integrity level studies what we call SIL studies are important. Why SIL study is important? SIL studies will give you a tool to assess reliability of critical systems. It will help you to avoid over or under engineering. It will enable you to achieve cost control without sacrificing reliability. It will help you to avoid risk based approach. This is a proactive method meets present and future government regulations in most of the countries. It helps you to mitigate the consequences. It helps to improve overall safety of the production facility. It better co corporate image and boosting employee morale working in the industry. What are the different safety standards practiced in different industries? IEC 61511 is the safety standard applicable to process industry. 
IEC 61513 is applicable to nuclear industry, IEC 62061 is safety about the equipments and machinery. There are many more for the standards available in this line. We are interested mostly on the basic standard IEC 61508 which is applicable to all industries and IEC 61511 which is purely applicable to process industries like oil and gas production industries. Let us ask a question what is the employee participation in process hazard analysis. The employee participation is mandatory if you really wanted to conduct a successful hazard analysis process. You must consult with your employees and the representatives on the development of process hazard analysis. It provides access to process hazard analysis to employees and their representatives. Incident investigation is a very important item in process safety. Each incident must be investigated. The incidents that caused a catastrophic release of hazardous chemicals or that could have resulted in such releases. Technically, this is what we call as near misses. The investigation must be initiated within 48 hours following the incident. An incident investigation team should consist of persons knowledgeable in the incident process, preferably employees who are likely to be involved in that process for a decent period of time because they will try to provide you the first hand information and possible reasons causes for such accidents which has been initiated. A thorough safety review program is also very important. Safety review must be performed to all new facilities. It should also be performed for modified facilities when the modification is significant enough to add or alter information to process safety details. Prior to introduction of highly hazardous chemicals to a process, safety review program must be implemented and this should confirm that construction and equipment is in accordance with the design specifications, safety, operating, maintenance and emergency procedures are in place and they are found to be adequate. New facilities of course, must perform a process analysis and implement recommendations before startup of any new project. Modified facilities must meet the requirements in the management of change. When we talk about process safety, operating procedures becomes very important and critical to have a successful process safety implementation. Develop and implement written operating procedures consistent with the process safety information. This information or this data should contain initial startup, normal and temporary operations of any equipment and machinery, normal and emergency shutdown procedures as applicable to that machinery, operating limitations and consequences of deviation, hazards present by the process. These are all to be well documented and most importantly ladies and gentlemen try to circulate this document and make it readily accessible to all employees of your organization, not necessarily only safety executives. Every employee of your company should be aware of this operating procedure of every plant and equipment involved in the company. The major flaw which generally foreseen in such kind of accidents in oil gas industry is work permit violations. Let us talk about hot work permit. Hot work permit is a very important terminology used in oil gas industry. Let us see what is that. The employer must issue a hot work permit for a hot work operations conducted on or near any covered process. So, for doing any hot work you must get a written permission what we call hot work permit. A typical hot work permit sheet is shown on the right side of your slide. The permit must contain that the fire prevention requirements have been implemented before starting the hot work operations. The dates authorized for hot work are mentioned very deliberately in the report or in the permit and it identifies the object on which hot work is to be carried out categorically. The permit must be kept on file until completion of hot work operations. You should not misplace the record. The successive problem which generally comes or which challenges process safety is mechanical integrity that is integrity or dependency of machinery when they are required to perform. The employer must establish and implement written procedures to maintain the ongoing integrity 
of any process equipment. The employer must train each maintenance employee about the process, its hazard and the maintenance procedures of every equipment involved in the process. Periodic training should be implemented to all employees to ensure that they can safely perform the assigned tasks related to man machine interface. Deficiencies in equipment that are outside acceptable limits must be corrected immediately. Maintenance schedule should be audited by a third party to assure safe operation. Inspection testing program is very mandatory because these programs will try to bring out the lacuna in terms of improper maintenance of every equipment practiced in the process industry. Of course, quality assurance is very important because you have got to adhere to the quality maintenance program if you really wanted to maintain a quality standard set of safety as well as industry standards as applicable to oil and gas industries. One such standard which talks about management of change is OSHA. OSHA 1910 one draft 2 talks about the procedures that shall assure the following considerations are addressed prior to change. Before you adapting any change management, you must understand the following. What is the technical basis for the proposed change? What is the impact of the change on safety and health? What are the modifications which result from this to the operating procedures? What is the necessary time period for the change and authorization requirements for the proposed change? So, you cannot simply change the management from one to another set of people unless otherwise these questions are thoroughly answered, deliberated and accepted by the high level management as well as the employee working in the industry. Followed by which is EPR which is emergency planning and response requirements. An emergency action plan must be available, it should be developed to ensure safe evacuation of employees. Plan must address all foreseeable emergency situations like fire, weather, chemical release etcetera. It should include the action plan if employees will respond to a sudden chemical release. Plan must address the means and methods that are necessary to protect the employees responding to an uncontrolled release of process chemicals. More importantly, though your company practices safety regulations in the process as well as design, one has got to be audited for its compliance. Let us see what are compliance audits. Adequacy of the employer's procedures and practices must be evaluated and inspected. It should be certified by a third party at every 3 years period interval. Compliance audit must be conducted by at least one person knowledgeable in the process. Findings and recommendations of this report should be implemented instantaneously. Employer therefore, must document an appropriate response and any corrective action taken by the employee or the employer based on the findings of this audit. Two most recent compliance audit reports must be retained for third party inspection as and when demanded. As we understand personal safety is an inherent part of process safety, training becomes a key word for personal safety success. The emphasis on specific safety and health hazards of the process should be implemented in any training program. Emergency operations including shutdown should be taught to the people. Safe work practices applicable to the employees job tasks should be educated. Refresher training at least every 3 years must be conducted. You have to prepare a record which contains the identity of the employee, the date of training, the means used to verify that employee has understood the training. This is very important part of the training program. Most of the companies do recruit people for training, send them for training in third party places, but they fail to understand and implement a mechanism by which they can ascertain that the employees have understood the training capsule completely and they have acquired the sufficient knowledge requested and demanded for them or demanded from them for the work culture where the production is being involved. The major emphasis is now given on contractors because contractors are third party people who are not employee of the company, but hired by the company 
for executing specialized kind of jobs. So, now let us see how process safety can be applicable to contractors. It applies to contractors performing maintenance or repair, turnaround, major renovation or specialty works on or adjacent to a covered process. However, it does not apply to contractor who provide instant services like water supply, food, drink, housekeeping etcetera. The employee responsibilities are the following one has got to obtain and evaluate information regarding the contract employer safety performance and programs. You cannot employ a contractor just like that you must ascertain the safety programs followed by the contractor before he is being deployed. Inform the contract employers of the known potential fire, explosion, toxic release hazards related to the contractors work and the process much in advance. So, do not try to employ a contractor personnel without intimating him what are the other substances which he is working with. Very importantly trade secrets, people generally think the trade secrets are highly patented and they should not be exchanged or they should not be made available in public domain. There is a small difference of opinion here let us try what is the trade secret. Employers must make trade secret information available to the person responsible whom not all of them, but the person who compiles the process safety information should be available to know the trade secret information. Developing process hazard analysis and operating procedures the person or the team responsible to conduct incident investigations, emergency planning and response operations and who follows the compliance audits. These personnel or these set of people or this team of people should be made available to understand the trade secret information of the company thoroughly. However, confidential agreements can be permitted so that the trade secret is not leaked off to the third party which can damage the reputation of the organization. Ladies and gentlemen it is very important to understand this saying it should not be necessary for each generation to rediscover principles of process safety which the generation before has already discovered. We must learn from the experience of others rather than learning it the hard way. Of course, we must pass on this to the next generation in the form of a record what we have learnt. Thank you very much.